I have with me uh, MP TMC Sushmita Dev. She's also co in charge uh, Goa. Uh, thank you. Welcome for coming and joining us this lovely evening. It's uh, I Sushmita was just telling me right before that she's been in Goa for as long, but she hasn't seen the beach, and this is the first time she's actually seeing the beach. So you know, I'm, I'm glad we gave you that opportunity, Sushmita, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. You know, Sushmita, let's begin with TMC's foray into Goa. You know, you guys, that historic win you scripted in West Bengal, you walked into, marched into Goa four months before elections. Many, it, it was also at a time, you know, when Meghalaya was happening, where overnight you guys became the principal opposition. Yeah. Uh, Meghalaya, you know, I'm sure it's, you know, when experience taught you it was different, what Goa, but I'm sure you thought that it is going to be something maybe like Meghalaya, where you, it's an easier state to deal with. Have you, you know, coming in here, is there a reality check for the TMC? Because if ground reports are to go by, if numbers are to go by, then TMC's lot is not looking as good as it should have been, or at least what was perceived four months ago when you guys came in here. You see, when we first decided to come to Goa as a party, the situation to us and as per the ground realities on the basis of our uh, real-time surveys was that there was a massive... Uh, wave against, against the BJP. People of Goa were sure that they're not going to go with the BJP. But at the same time, they were very skepti skeptical about who to vote for, given what had happened in 2017, how the en masse uh, exodus from the Indian National Congress. So there was a feeling that they needed an alternative here. And that was really our impetus to come into Goa. Um, the timing has been questioned not once but several times and why at such a late stage. But to be honest, the Bengal elections finished in the May of 21. And uh, after that victory, we repositioned ourselves and we picked Goa because our view was that there was a uh, crisis in Goa, political crisis, where there was no alternative and that was the mood of the people. And it is a fairly smaller state too, as you know. So uh, we picked Goa. And we decided to give it our best. I mean, you are telling me that the numbers are saying something else. But I believe that no one on the ground can deny that we are in the fight. We are part of the narrative. You may uh, love us, you may hate us, but you can't ignore us. And our candidates, um, I think in 90% of the seats, I wouldn't say 100%, are in uh, are contending hard and... And neither the Congress nor the BJP nor any other party can, Aam Aadmi Party can ignore the Trinamool Congress candidate and their might on the ground. Well, we definitely cannot ignore the TMC's presence in Goa because uh, for anyone who's come to Goa in the last three months, you only see hoardings of Mamta Banerjee. It's uh, every 10 steps that you go. Uh, you know, so that is what is perceived. And I want to ask you that question. Um, because of, you know, this massive thrust on advertising, this massive thrust on social media, uh, you are perceived to be the outsider which came with money and is trying to sway an election and maybe that is why possibly getting rejected? You see, all the uh, people contesting elections are all Goans. Nobody has come from Bengal and taken a ticket in Goa to fight. And um, the reason that you are calling or that narrative are outsider, it, it's, it's, it's the BJP's narrative. And the reason they are saying it is because Mamta Banerjee is the chief minister of Bengal and she's decided to come and fight in Goa. That way Narendra Modi was the chief minister of Gujarat and then decided to become the prime minister. So nobody called him an outsider because he comes from a party which had a national base. But uh, I don't think any political party, if they decide to go to any state, can be called an outsider. It is unconstitutional to say it. It is absolutely uh, a communal statement, if I may say so, and it's undemocratic. Mamta Banerjee, as a leader, has made her position very clear. She will go and fight the BJP where she feels there is no alternative or the alternative is uh, coming across as weak. And we are on record saying we are not in Punjab, we are not in Uttarakhand, uh, we are not in UP. We picked Goa and the reasons are very clear because there was no alternative in the minds of the people. You know, four months earlier, you said you came to Goa because you thought there was no political alternative. You wanted to present that with the TMC to the people of Goa. Yeah. But somewhere down the line, four months later, uh, many would suggest that uh, you turned around and you wanted to ally with the same party you wanted to replace, the Congress. You see, when we first came, like I told you, people perceived Congress 
from a position of weakness because of what happened in the last election like i have seen on social media several um, press meets on behalf of the indian national congress whether it's mr surjewala whether it's mr chidambaram whether it's girish but till today the congress party has not been able to give the people of goa a plausible explanation as to why they could not form the government despite having the numbers they are talking about environment they are talking about the culture of goa they are talking about the corruption of bjp but the first question that the congress party is actually facing on the ground that what went wrong today i believe uh, rahul ji is coming on the fourth all the candidates are going to take a pledge that we are not going to defect i mean you must have seen it on their uh, digital platform but the question is you got 17 mlas who did not defect on day 1 what was uh, what were the people who are at the helm of fs doing i think the pledge needs to come from those people that this time they'll not, not mismanage it Then and that's a big question in the minds of goan people Then, you uh, uh, sorry no no complete complete see today like i said when we first did our ground survey the narrative visa vis the congress was it's no point giving them Uh, the kind of mandate that they got last time because they literally threw it away and you should have mr falerio come on your show sometime and ask him what actually transpired despite 17 seats and a letter that was signed and ready to form the government why did that letter not reach the governor that's the question congress needs to answer and unless they answer that question there will be a big question mark right till the 14th of february which congress will face there are questions that emerge as well where mr falerio backing out of fighting an election for the tmc is concerned but we'll come to that later i'll come back to the question of the congress if the congress is such a weak link in this election then why publicly want to ally with the congress you the tmc made it very clear that they wanted an alliance sir, with the congress the congress turned you down we came fighting with our full might I mean, four months back, I had friends coming to Goa. I myself had joined the team with Moa, and people saying, "My God, Trinamool is the only party on the ground with their Griha Lakshmi, you know, uh, campaign with their Yuva Shakti campaign, and there was no other party on the ground apart from us." Now you say, "Why did you approach the Congress for an alliance?" As we went closer towards election, there there was a view, there was a view on the ground that. the fight against bjp may be stronger if tnc and congress had some sort of an understanding and congress was consistently building up this narrative against us that trinamool congress is going to divide the votes and aam aadmi is going to divide the votes i mean go back you know a month and you will see that was their narrative so we came clean we are very clear our fight is with the bjp and if if people felt that congress and tmc having some sort of an understanding which strengthen the opposition we are not arrogant so we said okay fine let's talk but sushmita that is still what the congress says i had uh, randeep singh surjewala here just about 5 minutes ago uh, before you and that's what he said that what the Con what the tmc or even he said the aam aadmi party what both these parties have done is you have muddied the political waters of goa where you'll be nothing else but a spoiler you see it's it's reeks of arrogance when a party says that another party coming and fighting it out on the ground doesn't matter which party it is it's a spoiler going by those standards there are only two national parties in the real sense who have spread across the country that means no third party can come up do we keep waiting for congress to defeat bjp no we have every right to come and fight here but in the fight if we feel if we feel that we could we should open the doors to talk about an alliance or any other understanding it's in the greater interest of goa to defeat bjp so for the congress should have come four notches down i mean you are yourself saying that oh you we are dividing the vote these parties are being spoilers that means you are accepting the fate that itself is an admission of the fact that we are a factor so what is it what is it the congress wants that everybody should pack their bags and go no they are not so open the, to an okay. alliance so what the congress is saying is that uh, your reality check was the congress in 
you know, it was a reality check for the TMC, but also on the strength of the Congress in Goa. And with you coming in right now, you have muddied the waters in terms of splitting the vote as such, because you are presenting an anti-BJP picture. You've been a co-in charge here. You know how small the margins are on each seat. So you're small going to, seat. yes, the margins are small. And in midst of all of this, the BJP will walk away. No, I think, I think it's a very unfair argument on the part of the Congress if they are saying so. See, please understand, I again want to say that with the Trinamool com Congress coming on the ground in Goa, it has actually injected dynamism into the opposition politics. Congress was lying dead. Please believe me, Congress was dead. We came and we injected dynamism, dynamism into the Goan thing. But yes, there was a narrative building up against us by the BJP and to some extent by the Congress saying they are not willing to talk, they are being spoilers. So we said, look, we are willing to talk. That's all we said. Many suggest that your willingness to talk stems from the fact that in four months of you coming here, you've seen desertions, you've seen internal dissent and what you have primarily are second-hand candidates. Mostly, eight of your candidates right now are the ones who were denied a ticket by the Congress. Two of them themselves joined you because they were denied a ticket from the BJP. What are the three things you said? Uh, you desertions, st internal dissent and... Uh, Defection. No, no, no. Uh, desertion, internal dissent. Are, what would I say? Uh, okay. Candidates, your candidates, second-hand candidates. Let me tell you, these three words can be applied to any party in Goa. Uh, it can be applied to any party, even, even the Indian National Congress. Falerio, uh, Mr. Falerio left the Congress and joined Trinamool Congress. Mr. Lobo left the BJP and went to Indian National Congress. But Mr. Falerio the same, also... The same Goa Forward Party, which put egg on the face of Indian National Congress, has now gone back to Congress. So I think, I think we are all at par. So let's not uh, do any mudslinging. Each party has been through a similar experience in Goa and we are all fighting it out with what we think are good candidates. Well, and at least we are not getting our candidates to say, please take a pledge that you're not going to defect. See, let me put it in perspective. What good is a pledge when the constitution says if two-thirds of your MLAs decide to leave, they'll go? Is the Congress pledge greater than that? And that's exactly what happened to the Congress. So this pledge is not going to work. Mm -hmm. This pledge is not going to work. But I understand why the Congress is doing it. It comes back to what I said. There's a huge trust deficit where the Congress High Command can hold on to the candidates that will win and come. And the biggest evidence of that is the pledge. Sushmita, so, you know, the Congress suggests that eight of their, the ones that they didn't give a ticket to, are the ones that you've entertained. Two of them from the BJP. So That's Mr. why the Lobo, second hand. Mr. Lobo and his wife are not getting a ticket from the BJP, so they are in the Congress. I yes, mean, fair enough. I mean, you know what I'm saying. So we are all guilty of the same thing, or we all stand vindicated of the same thing. It's, it's, look at it either way. Sushmita, so, where does the TMC's alliance with the MGP stand right now? Because the MGP was missing when the manifesto was announced. Because it is said your best bet right now in Goa is your alliance with the MGP. See, MGP was not missing. The working president of the MGP was there. Yes, I understand when you say that alliance cannot only happen on paper. Uh, alliance has to work on the ground. There has to be vote transfer. So MGP has to transfer their vote to us. And we are working on that. We have a complete schedule of where MGP leaders will campaign for our candidates. Just wait till the 5th and I think uh, that, that was my second question because yeah. they haven't really come down. But I'll ask you another one. Where does the TMC, you know, keeping in with your alliance with the MGP, where does the TMC stand on ideology? Because when you take on nationally... You have this very anti-Hindutva, anti-right-wing stand. The BJP does this, 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 this. The MGP has gone a step further in many instances in Goa. So is the ideology different at a national level when you're looking at making national statements? When it comes to alliances, it suits you, so you go with the MGP? What is the TMC ideology? See, if, if you look at our manifesto, uh, it's very clear. Those are the things we've agreed on in Goa. It's like saying, why is the Congress with Shiv Sena? You know, it's like saying, why is the Congress with Shiv Sena in, in Maharashtra? Isn't there a clash of ideology? It's very simple. MGP is opposed to the Bhartiya Janta Party. MGP is going to fight Bhartiya Janta Party in their bastions. So we are very clear that MGP is, is going to uh, defeat the BJP in their strongholds. We are quite sure of that. We've done our homework. So let's wait till the 10th of March. And you think MGP will still stay with you after the 10th of March? Yes, they will. 
they definitely will but i'm not sure whether goa forward will stay with the congress you see so you see i'll tell you something uh, it's a real issue in the minds of the people that what what and who they are voting for what will happen on the day of the uh, uh, thing that's why aam aadmi party has an affidavit you know it's a nice gimmick you know congress has a pledge but we are very clear we've had we've had our talks we've agreed on uh, on wh what kind of politics we want to ensue as alliance partners and that's our faith and that's our faith and i'm 100% sure that the mgp will not go with the bjp their entire politics is against the B uh, bjp look at it ideology is the same ideology see ideology may be the same but the question is when two parties come together you have like a common minimum program which i've seen in the congress and that's our manifesto and that's our agreement you know that's our agreement and i mean you politics is very dynamic so you 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 are right in saying that ideologically are you on the same footing but we saw mgp as a force that could fight the bjp in their bastion and that was the basis of our alliance with them sushmita staying with ideology why should anyone look at you being different than the bharatiya janata party because you've been accused of massively poaching in goa uh, you know you wanted to ally with the congress they say one of the main reasons they didn't is because you came and poached all their leaders and th you have always accused the bjp of following the ideology or the politics of defection of uh, poaching how does that make you different than the bjp in goa you know i like the fact that you're saying congress said we came and poached all their leaders then is the congress with the second rate candidates left if we've taken away all their leaders anyway be that as it may uh, see i'll tell you what this whole whining about poaching doesn't suit the indian national congress with all due respect to them they are a very old party grand old party like prashant says but see i'll tell you something you cannot be poaching bjp people in uttarakhand and posing with them in 12 to glakling and then saying oh tinamool is taking all our leaders have they not taken leaders in karnataka from the bjp and made them join with dk shivkumar have they not given a nana patole Uh, you know uh, the, the made him the chief of maharashtra have you not made raven raddi the president of telangana so you know it's like it's like it's whining i mean it's these are these are crocodile tears so it's like if you're living in a glass house don't throw stones on others you've taken lobo from the bjp and lobo's wife from the bjp uh, lobo has given congress half their candidates so it it's 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 it i think that that argument doesn't stand it's very simple we came as a party we you promised the new dawn you said that's what you came in that the new dawn for goa but the politics is the same of defection see let me tell you something goa is a very small uh, political class it's a very small state a bit like the tripura so when a new party comes anybody you take will come from some party You know what I mean? If today if you start a new television channel and you decide to get ten good anchors, they're bound to come from either India Today or NDTV or those channels. So is that poaching? No, you're not forcing anybody to come. We are saying we are a new party. We we want a new dawn. Help us. These are our schemes. This is how we plan to do it. And they joined Mamta Banerjee. And let's face it, she is a force to reckon with today in India, whether we like it or not. If we're going to talk about uh, the force to reckon with in Mamta Banerjee, you named Prashant Kishore. um uh, who is running your campaign is it ipac or is it uh, tmc i don't see ipac giving any speeches anywhere i don't see photographs of ipac been tweeted but yes they are, they are consultants it was a greenfield project they came in first and gave us a proper thara study the surveys i keep talking about is uh, was first done by prashant kishore and the ipac team we don't deny that but after that Derek O'Brien came in, Moha Moitra came in, I came in, others came in, Pawan Verma has come in. So it's not like IPAC is running the show. But when you do a greenfield project, you need to know what the ground realities are. What you keep telling me about. And remember, a consultant brings in an objective view. There are no biases. You know, did an, he's, he's, did he speaks over, truth to power. Did an overzealous consultant um, sell TMC? the dreams of national expansion through goa if you don't have fire in your belly if you don't have dreams then why are you a consultant a consultant is in the business of giving you confidence and telling you the truth the limitations that's what prashant does we knew our odds 
and we don't i mean we are not scared of we are not scared of taking on a new challenge how else do we expand from bengal i mean no no consultant can come and tell you here is a guarantee and you are going to win he said it's a small state you were fighting chances a vacuum there mamta banerji is a brand name let's fight it out so we came i mean you can't hold a consultant to any guarantees you can't do that sushmita so, with the tmc coming what indirectly happened was that the aam aadmi party which was seen as a relatively outsider newer player in goa became the insider while you appropriated the outsider tag see as far as i am concerned aam aadmi party has definitely been here longer and you will see you will see that when the results come is going to be no different no different because to what? our our reports say our reports say that they haven't gained anything in the last 5 years no if you literally look... it's not going to convert into a game that the time they've done in goa just trust me when i say that that's my view i may be wrong but this is our view aam aadmi party may have come 5 years back but they've i been don't consistent. think they you they've been consistent is they they were here in 2014 you were here in 2012 you didn't fight 2017 yeah, so we 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 been we made a beginning 4 years back and we are going to be consistent you have to wait 5 years to see whether we are but consistent or not but you skipped 2017 so tell me something suppose we came after the goa elections then someone can say why didn't you come before if you come 3 months before why didn't you come 6 months before you have to start somewhere you have to start somewhere and i think it's extremely unfair in such a large democracy to tell a party which trying to expand that don't go to this state because you'll be cutting this vote and that vote of course we are here we will eat into someone's vote share why not you're a national party you're the mighty party fight us why are you so scared why are you crying you talk about national ambitions yesterday very many some would suggest foolhardy some would say it takes a fair amount of stomach to uh make a claim that uh, or make a statement that you'd be fighting which mamta banerji did yesterday in 2024 from uttar pradesh now that's very clear she's made known her national ambitions was it you know we'll talk about that after but i want to ask you was it with an eye on what's happening in goa right now see mamta banerji after the last uh, assembly election uh first met uh Mrs Gandhi and like minded parties in the month of August i remember it was 20th of August and opposition unity that whole discussion was on she was crystal clear in the meeting she said whoever has a uh, whoever has the strength to fight bjp in wherever must get together she was a leader who in that meeting told all the other leaders present there including mrs gandhi congress president that you need to talk to a jagan reddy too you need to talk to trs too you need to talk to nitish kumar too so you can't keep saying upa upa she said it in that meeting that today if you want to beat bjp you have to say that the nda alliance partners are not untouchable also she was the first to say it so when she talks about opposition unity she is not just talking about the left and rjd and ncp she is also talking about a jagan reddy in in anda you know so that's her idea people people said why did she say oh upa is not there she 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 is right when she says it upa was a post poll understanding to give a governance and to keep bjp out of government those same people are today repositioned how many seats did congress have then and how much does congress have now upa was a post poll alliance so she is saying there has to be a new set of alliance today to defeat the so BGP. this new That's political order saying. this new political order yeah. which she is suggesting that and her claim that she is fighting from up in 2024 clearly she wants to lead lead this new political order she wants to be the tmc wants to be the primary opposition in 2024 well, she def- she definitely wants to play a significant role in that fight and who's going to be prime minister who knows we've had a mr devagoda as a prime minister we've had mr chandrashekar as a prime minister i mean everybody thought mrs gandhi would be prime minister but dr manmohan singh became and mrs gandhi has proved she can make any sacrifice in the greater interest of the nation i mean she is known for her sacrifice you know so you don't know who's going to become the prime minister next does the tmc want to be the primary opposition in 2024 we we want to be one of the strongest forces to fight the bjp on the ground half an and, hour and and if i sorry hey, to interrupt you and if i may say so 
that the entire nation and the world if i may say so watched the bengal election it was one hell of a fight and anybody who can uh, anybody who says that mamta banerji uh, is is helping the bjp directly or indirectly knowingly or unknowingly quote unquote what mr surjewala said it flies in the face of what happened in bengal she single handedly against central forces election commission of india narendra modi ji amit shah and so on so forth fought that battle and how she had been written off so she is a woman of conviction and she plans to she plans to give bjp a fight wherever wherever she feels she can and she believes in opposition unity just trust me when i say that if any even we in her own election the speech she gave i mean it was an internal meeting she was crystal clear she said i will try my best to bring everybody together and if i can't akla cholo re that's why we are in goa well she is all in for opposition unity the congress was on this stage 20 minutes ago they say they are all in where opposition unity is concerned the congress also says we are all in for opposition unity as long as each opposition party understands that the congress is on the center of that opposition unity do you accept that i agree i want to tell mr surjewala that how can you give me a lesson on op opposition unity in goa what did you do in bengal you tied up with cpm and isf whatever that party is and fought mamta banerji on 294 seats what were you doing there you should have shut shop there and let mamta banerji sweep and defeat the bjp in bengal today why are you in odisha doing what what is the congress is present in odisha in tripura 1% shut shop if you believe in opposition you know i wish uh, i was on the stage with mr surjewala you can't say chit bhi meri aur pat bhi meri heads is also mine and tails is also mine you are giving mamta banerji a lesson on opposition you need shut shop in tripura and west bengal tomorrow wrap it up ask them to merge with the congress uh, with the trinamool congress when it comes on the national stage will the tmc follow the congress will the congress says they are going to be the we, fulcrum of opposition unity see we will do everything that's required to do to stop the bhartiya janata party we will do everything that is required required to do but all i'm saying let me let me put it on record today it does not suit the congress to say why have you come to goa why are you going there why are you going there what is the logic that you are trying to cut into the opposition vote then in i i'm repeating preeti they fought in two cpm and congress and went to zero let mrs gandhi show her goodwill and her faith in opposition unity by doing a press meet and announcing that they will not give lok sabha candidates in bengal and tripura where they are below 1% will they do it i'm just saying you know what i mean but but what is the mood of the nation you're a journalist you're on the ground you talk to people the mood of the nation is there is a huge number of people increasing by the day who want to change in this country and that has to be everybody's focus one would think um you know sushmita because of late we've seen arvind kejriwal aam aadmi party is fighting this election here go all out to praise mamta banerjee's leadership he's called mamta banerjee his elder sister he thinks uh, you know in the long run um when we go into 24 she's going to play a significant role vice versa mamta banerjee has been very very kind in terms of uh, verbally praising mr arvind kejriwal would you not reckon because instead of facing the embarrassment that you did with the congress by offering an alliance your natural alliance was the aam aadmi party in goa why didn't you ally with them see i'll tell you something it is not about there is no embarrassment we have to stop thinking in those terms that this is an embarrassment and that is an embarrassment we approached the congress because congress was consistently saying that tmc is not talking to anybody tmc is the spoiler so we said fine if you think we are a factor and we are we are also doing surveys we know what is our vote share and go let's talk we never said give us 10 seat you take 20 or 30 or 10 or whatever we said you want to talk let's talk but they didn't talk so there is no embarrassment in that but if the you know if the ultimate aim is what you say is to be anti bjp yeah. then why not ally with the with the aam aadmi party why not start talks there both of you fought together in seats where the margin is so small you would have consolidated that vote instead of splitting it see as far as i know we did not shut doors on anyone there were a lot of back channels going on some worked some didn't work 
and that's the way it happened so everything can't be put on record but i am telling you something that this uh, uh, goa election is a very important phenomena and a very significant phenomena what is see all your questions are relating to what happened before uh, the campaign started or before the notification happened but we will have to also all these questions will be relevant even after 10th of march so let's okay. see how it goes i mean politics is very dynamic let's it see it all depends what you get <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on that i think it a lot see let me i tried to explain to many people who raised the same concerns that you are about goa but i think an average goan citizen uh, needs to understand there's a huge risk in putting all your eggs in one basket called the indian national congress it's a big risk and that's a foregone conclusion which is because of what happened in the last and i am telling you that the goan citizen is very intelligent they will look at the candidate they are very small constituencies candidates are a big factor they will support strong candidates i feel they will support a lot of strong candidates in goa and it's there are going to be lot of surprises i feel in the uh, goan goa election results and i believe that uh i believe that there is a uh, there is a narrative out there where people are still thinking that will congress be able to hold on to everybody and the pledge they take on the 4th will only reiterate that view is going to backfire on them that's what i think i wish they had not done it sushmita in politics it's a cliche i'll quote it timing is everything absolutely did did the tmc come too late into the game where goa is concerned you know you were on a high after west bengal you were seen as this juggernaut uh, you you actually held the juggernaut of narendra modi and amit shah in west bengal uh, should you either have come in earlier or should you have not come in at all see priti there is always you have to start somewhere you know you have to start somewhere what is the right timing i mean you can't take out a mahurat but so many states were going to election we picked a state where we felt there was a vacuum and it's never too late to go out there fill up a vacuum and fight a communal party like bjp we are not we are not we don't fear that i think it took a lot of courage it took a lot of conviction to get up and say time is short yet we are ready for the fight that's the way you need to look at have it have you the tmc met its come upons in goa have you met what its come upons have you met it's is it a reality check for you see we are we <laughs> it is not about a reality check for trinamool congress the fact is in 3 or 4 months we are part of the narrative people are talking about us we have a certain vote share that's going to impact this mandate that's a lot to achieve in 4 months i think i think the reality check is we are even more encouraged that we can do this and we are going to do it even in other states that's what we think we are going to spread our wings in other states other states later i want to ask you about goa itself win or lose You know, you were here in 2012. You left in 2017. You're back in 22. No matter what you get, let's say, you know, let's not give it a figure, but whatever you get, right? Single digit, double digit, no digit, whatever you might get. Will the TMC stay in Goa right now as a regional force, regional party, building from here, or will you now pack your bags and go back to West Bengal and look at other states? See, when you keep saying pack your bags and go back to Bengal, I repeat what I said at the beginning of the show. that we have not brought people from bengal to fight here na all the candidates are candidates who are fighting they are from goa why will they pack their bags and go to bengal they are goans they but, are going to stay here they go to fight but sushmita goan political history stands testimony and you yourself began this discussion with that the candidates never quite stay in the same party so it all depends so is is the tmc here for good where goa we are concerned? here to stay we are here to stay and irrespective of what may have happened in the past i think the mamta banerji who's emerging as a leader now cannot be compared to what she was 10 years back and i think that writing is on the wall i'll you know ask you one final question what is the tmc's number out of 40 seats in goa where does the tmc think it's going to stand see we we if you ask me for a specific number i'm unable to give it because after the 5th we'll be in a better position we are doing our surveys almost every 4 to 5 days and i can telling i can tell you that our uh, where we were a month back mm -hmm. we are growing stronger okay and if you ask me a number and if i hope i am on your show soon again 
around the eighth or ninth, I'll be in a better position to give you. Why a don't number. you tell me single digit or double digit? Double digit for sure. For sure. For sure. You'll write it down and give it to me. It's like the Congress's affidavit. <laughs> will you will you write it down and aam aadmi party's affidavit will you give will you write it down if you want me to, to write it down i'll write it down i'll come back on okay. your show Double and, digit. and 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 what i'm saying is that please uh, please be sure please be sure and i reiterate myself we are here to fight the bjp and we'll go to any length all right appreciate you joining us sushmita thank you thank so you. much i really enjoyed and it. i'm glad we got you to see the beach in all the time that you've been here campaigning thank you